We presented the matrix displacement method for analyzing frames subjected to joint loads in the previous lecture. Here, we are going to see how the method can be used to deal with member loads as well as joint loads. The overall strategy for handling member loads is rather straightforward. We are going to replace them with their equivalent joint loads. Then we analyze the frame as was described previously in lecture SA49. Our beam column element has six degrees of freedom, and it has six member and forces. Without any loads applied to the member, the member equations can be expressed as F equals K times D, where F is the force vector, D is the displacement vector, and K is the member stiffness matrix. When the member is subjected to a load, say a distributed load of W, then the equation becomes F equals K times D plus P, where P represents fixed end forces due to the member load. In the case of a uniformly distributed load of W applied to a member of length L, the elements of P are Note that here, the forces are specified in the member or local coordinate system. When transformed to the global coordinate system, the equation becomes where Q is the force transformation matrix defined in lecture SA49, it equals to here, theta is the member's inclination angle. Let's use uppercase P to refer to Q times the lowercase p. So the uppercase P is the vector of fixed end forces specified in the global coordinate system. We can use this vector to come up with the equivalent joint loads for the purpose of calculating the joint displacements and rotations. Consider this frame. Member AB is subjected to a concentrated load at its midpoint. In the local coordinate system, the fixed end forces for the member are in vector form. This can be written as The member has an inclination angle of 90 degrees, so the force transformation matrix is then P for AB becomes Let's show these forces graphically. Since static equilibrium at the joints must be maintained, then at A we have and at joint B we get these are the equivalent joint loads for the 16 kN concentrated load. Therefore, we can replace this with these. We need to do the same for member BC. The member is subjected to a uniformly distributed load of 3 kN per meter. So the fixed end forces are In matrix form, we can write here the inclination angle is zero, so matrix Q becomes Multiplying Q by P, we get These are the equivalent joint loads for the uniformly distributed load. Let's place them at joints B and C. The cumulative joint loads are The horizontal force at A is going to be absorbed by the pin support. It is not going to affect the frame members at all. Similarly, the two forces at C are going to be absorbed by the fixed support. So for determining the joint displacements and rotations, we can ignore all three forces. This means we need to analyze the frame subjected to these joint loads only. Let's assume the following material and section properties for the structural members. This is the same frame that we used in lecture SA49. There we defined the stiffness matrix for member AB. Here it is. And for member BC, we got... We also derived the system stiffness matrix for the entire frame. Here is the matrix. Given that the frame has four degrees of freedom, the system of equations for the entire structure can be written as... The force vector here consists of the joint forces. It equals to 
The solution for this system of equations is Let's use the computed displacements to write the displacement vector for each member. For member AB, we get and for BC, we have Knowing the stiffness matrix and the displacement vector for each member, we can calculate its member and forces using equation for AB, we get Here are the forces shown graphically. For member BC, the end forces are or Now we can easily determine the support reactions. They are In future lectures, we will apply this method to analyze frames in various structural systems.